Aloha everyone and welcome back to Kaimana Conservation, the channel where we talk about the ocean and everything ocean related. For those of you that haven't been here before, my name is Jessica and I'm a professional marine biologist that lives on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Today we're going to be talking about marine debris. Marine means ocean, debris means trash. So specifically we're looking at um, the topic of human trash in the ocean. That's a little bit of a sadder topic, but in a way we are trying to make it fun today. And we're going to be talking about the top five craziest marine debris finds that I have ever found while working as a marine biologist. I currently live in Maui, but for this list and for the sake of this list, um, we're going to be expanding that to everywhere that I have worked, um, which includes a lot of different locations. So I'll include the location in the list. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Number one on the list in no particular order uh, was over a ton of of ghost nets entangled with fishing buoys and fishing lines that floated into Molokini Crater here in Maui. For those of you that aren't familiar with what a ghost net is, the marine fishing industry sometimes will discard intentionally or they will lose pieces of their fishing equipment and fishing gear off the side of the boat while they're out and they are uh, while they're out fishing. So what happens is because it's all you know it's rope and line, it can be, become very easily entangled in other things, including other ghost nets. So they just pile up and pile up and pile up over time. Marine fisheries, including ghost nets, it actually makes up some of the highest percentages of marine debris found in the ocean, especially floating up at the surface. It's quite buoyant. Um, so to find the ghost nets is not necessarily abnormal, but to find it in that quantity over a ton of marine debris and ghost nets and buoys all entangled together floating around, um, that's where the significance of the situation came in. And what really stands out to me in my mind is not only the sheer mass of line that we found, which was over a ton, but also that there were different languages on the different fishing buoys entangled in the mess. Um, to me, that's almost more significant because that shows you that the ghost nets had been floating around the ocean for quite a while and there were different ghost nets and then they all got tangled up over time from different regions. So basically it's a snowballing effect. You have one and then it attaches more and attaches more and then you have representation, not good representation, um, from areas all around the Pacific before it landed in the Hawaiian Islands. So who's to say how long it was floating out there before it got to us? So as we were pulling into Molokini Crater that morning, uh, several of the members of the team noticed a big green mass that was stuck along the back wall of Molokini Crater. So once we tied the boat up, we swam over to it and realized just how sizable, how significant um, the entanglement was. It was uh, wrapped around quite a few of the rocks. There was some coral underneath that was being smothered. So we knew that we couldn't leave it there, of course. Um, so it took pretty much every single person that was working on the boat that day in the water uh, disentangling and then we were able to once we disentangled it float it back over to the boat you have to be really really careful when you're working with ropes and lines in the water especially big tangled messes like that um, a lot of marine animals do get tangled up and that is how they die so we want to make sure we're very careful but we were able to disentangle everything and we brought it back over to the boat and it took <laughs> felt like an eternity but it was probably only like 20 or 30 minutes or so to get all of that up and onto the back of the boat. Number two on the top craziest finds for marine debris was a beach full of plastic. This isn't really like a find but I want to include it because I do think it is the craziest, like it definitely makes its way into the craziest list um, because there are some beaches out here, especially in, in Hawaii, but in other parts of the world as well, that are, have been so inundated with plastic over time and then you get continual wave action that it breaks those pieces of plastic down and then the beach is no longer a sand beach or a rock beach even. It is a plastic beach. Um, and we actually have a beach out here in the Hawaiian Islands like that. Um, it was on my bucket list to go see it, but it was uh, obviously not an exciting thing for your bucket list, but I did want to go see it even though I knew it was going to be quite sad. I, I, you know, I wanted to see like what humans do and how we impact our reefs. Um, and I actually, there's, there's no rule in taking si plastic sand from a beach. This right here is just a small sample of the plastic beach that um, we went and visited on the Big Island. It's on the south side of the Big Island. And what I think is so interesting about that beach 
um, obviously devastating that it's covered in plastic is because of its proximity to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, if you guys haven't heard about it, um, is this massive floating it, it's not an island. I've heard it described as an island. It's not really something you can go stand on. It's more like a soup. Um, so there's basically this high concentration of plastics and microplastics that are uh, floating around because the uh, state of Hawaii, the, the Hawaiian island chain, is smack in the middle of the Pacific and really close to the doldrums we are right right next to the pacific the the great pacific garbage patch which is actually the world's largest uh garbage floating garbage patch in the world um and there um i think are seven now that have been identified so we're right next to the biggest one and the main major contributor to the plastic that is on that beach in on the big island is the pacific garbage patch it is just incredible that like there's an entire beach that is quite literally it's rainbow um which is interesting um, and it's it's all plastic crazy marine debris find number three is uh was in fiji and it was a giant corrugated tin roof um <laughs> so i lived in fiji uh, a couple years ago now more than a couple years ago now um and it i moved there right after hurricane winston um for those of you guys are familiar um hurricane winston was the largest and most devastating hurricane in the southern hemisphere on record it just kind of sat over fiji and just caused devastation uh for a long period of time heavy rains heavy winds um, and a lot of houses got washed away, roofs got blown away, um, and then it ended up in the ocean. Um, so when I was working at the resort in Fiji, we were on like a little offshoot island, so it was pretty far away um, from the main island, but one of our house reefs, so one of our little local reefs in the area, actually was the landing place of a massive corrugated metal tin roof that had just, goodness knows, like if it floated out there, if it was how, like how far it came or if it flew out there in the wind, but the roof was, I mean, it's a roof, it's, it's huge. Um, and it had broken off into like smaller pieces, um, when, where the seams had, had ripped, um, all the bolts had come out but in general that there were i don't think there were like four or five like big sections of roof that had just landed on top of the coral reef so that was um a really crazy uh find and it actually ended up becoming part of my dive masters mapping project so if any dive masters out there you might be familiar with the mapping project that we have to do um so i was learning about marine debris and, and doing beach cleanups as part of the um uh, my contribution to the resort at the time and I decided to mesh the two together and so I decided that I was going to map out the roofing um, on the reef and then I was going to combine that with my uh, recent studies on marine debris and how to use lift bags in order to get marine debris off of the bottom. It's a little crazy endeavor now that I think back on it but after I had finished the mapping project we actually were able to go get enough lift bags to pull each one of these sections of corrugated roof off of the reef one at a time and then we strung a rope underneath and basically lashed it to the bottom of our little jetty boat um which i'm just incredulous that it worked now that i think back on it we were able to lash it to the bottom of the boat and then very very slowly bring each one of these corrugated metal pieces back to the shore now sadly fiji doesn't really have a big a recycling program or anything we were in a very isolated location um, so the 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 corrugated roof just ended up uh, a little bit past the beach we were able to pull it up and create like a resting place for it along with all the other debris that had been washing up on the beaches over time after Winston um, so not always like a happy ending when it comes to like what you do with that debris after it's taken off the reef um, but on the bright side we were able to remove all of those pieces successfully from the reef um, and then the coral was able to recover after that so number four on the top craziest marine debris finds was actually found here in maui as well also in molokini crater a little bit more cool but for different reasons and that was uh ammunition from world war ii uh so i thought that was pretty cool let's see if we can't get that to focus so we got ammunition from world war ii found at molokini crater 
It's a little bit of a sad history, but Molokini Crater, as well as Kaha Olave, which is the island behind it, um, was actually taken over by the U.S. military just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, um, and it was uh, taken over under martial law, which means that the military had complete control. And for the following decades, uh, sadly, Kaha Olave was even up into the 90s. Um, they used that lo those two locations as target practice. Um, so Molokini Crater is it's by no means small, but it's about the same size as an aircraft carrier, or at least that was the justification for dropping bombs on it and shooting it. Um, and you can still, to this day, find ammunition just like this um, if you're out diving at Molokini Crater. So, um, and I've seen you know other types of ammunition down there as well. There's unexploded ordinances like bombs that are much larger. Obviously, I'm not gonna mess with those and bring them up to the surface. Um, but these guys are a really cool find when you're out at Molokini Crater. And last but not least, number five on the top five list of craziest marine debris finds. Um, um, to me, this is definitely number one, even though I said, like, no particular order, um, because it was a mannequin, a life-size mannequin. Guys, that's terrifying to find washed up on the beach. Um, so I was working in Fiji, let's look backstory here. I was working in Fiji, and like I mentioned, this was right after Hurricane Winston, which was the strongest hurricane. It had absolutely incredible damage to not only the physical property but there were also a lot of deaths and there were also a lot of missing people um, when i moved in to the resort area part of my like daily duties as well as the rest of the resort is to uh, walk up and down the beach in the morning and pick up things that were washing up on the beach in front of the resort it was kind of like fighting an uphill battle sadly because we were getting lots and lots of debris on every tide that had gotten washed off the main fijian island during the storm um, that being said most of it was like bottles, cans, f random flip-flops, uh, toothbrushes, q-tip sticks. It's like daily household items for the most part. And so I was doing my walk up and down the beach and uh, out of the corner of my eye, like uh, down towards the far end of the beach, so it was definitely outside of where I was collecting from, um, I see this shape body essentially um on the sand like half in half out of the water um and it was like unmistakably a body and i <laughs> just remember in my heart of hearts i genuinely thought i was looking at a dead body and so i started walking towards it and like that shape became much more apparent and i started running towards it i was like oh my gosh i don't even know what, know what i'm gonna do when i get there if it's just this dead body that had washed up on shore um, but so I got as I got closer obviously I started to realize that it wasn't an actual body it was made out of plastic but guys that is absolutely terrifying to come up on what you think is a yeah, human being um, a not living human being so that's definitely number one for me so that being said those were my top five craziest marine debris finds as a marine biologist i hope you guys enjoyed the list obviously this isn't a meant to be like a super cheerful list um this is a way of making it a little bit more fun of a topic to talk about but in reality marine debris is a very serious problem and you can find all kinds of things in the ocean from your tiniest tiniest microplastics to your one ton ball of ghost nets floating around in the ocean so um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about marine debris and all the crazy stuff that you can find and hopefully this encourages you guys to go out if you are on a shoreline um, and to go out and collect debris of your own thank you guys so much for joining me today and i'll see you guys around next time mahalo